Okay, so this is the passenger side. Um, I already got the caliper off. Everything's off over here. Got everything going on. Take the hub off. Don't know what I'm saying now. <laughs> um, basically, I already pulled this out. This whole section, the gear, you know, the whole setup here. The prongs, lock and hub, the ring. All that's left is I gotta pull the uh, E. The wow, lots of words here. I gotta pull the clip off here in front of this main gear. And then I gotta pull that off, and then I gotta go in, and I gotta put on the spindle nut socket, and take off the spindle nut, and pull out the little ring, and then the other spindle nut, and pull the hub, and then pound out the races. But first, first things first, I gotta clean this up, and pull that clip. So I'll be right back. Okay, so like most crazy people that work on cars, they decided to crank it down way too tight. And I had to use a breaker bar on it. So. Once you get the spindle nut off. In this case, I'm going to look at it for a second because it's way too clean. Okay. There's some oil in there, it's like grease, and there's some whitish looking grease, but it's not white lithium grease, and it's not white bearing grease either. It looks like the kind of stuff you get when you uh, mix water into grease in there too. So I'm guessing that's why the grease is a little bit oily. It's lovely. So somebody got a little water in the axle at one point. It's good to know. Go in there and grab that spacer. It's a two finger drop. Okay. So that comes out. And just pull that out. You'll see it in person. You'll be able to see that. Remember the direction that it came out. So mine came out this way. So lay it down flat. Lay it down flat the way it came out. So that's the inside, is the side that's touching the board. Same as this. And remember which one is the inner. So this is the outer, so I laid it with an outer part over here. And then we got the inner spindle nut. Which you can't really see. So I'll take it out. Let that come out. As soon as we line it up. And suck it. This one's off. Now it's off. Come on. That should pop right out. Look at that. So that's the inside one. And now there's nothing else holding this hub on, so be careful if it's at if you're just doing the one side, which Remember, if you do just one side, you should really do the other, because if you do both sides at once, they're going to last about the same, unless you are crazy and you do crazy things, or you off-road. Off-roading, of course, is one thing that you want to take into consideration. You know, only have one bad side, then yeah, just replace one side. Don't be afraid to hurt it, because you won't, unless you just drop the whole hub on the ground. Now look at the spindle for a second. This is things that you want to do as you're going along. Take a look at your spindle. It's always good to look at your spindle, right? Check and see for any grooving. Not that you can do much about it besides obviously replace it, but if you're like me and you're poor, 
you don't got the money. So yeah, you use the same one, even if it is grooved. And mine's got some scratches and dents, but it'll be okay. A couple dents right here, things right there. It's not really that good, but you can tell these bearings have been done before. Which is, I mean, it's a plus, but somebody did it really, really badly, as I noticed on the other side when I was doing it. Um, it's going to need a new backing plate, which in my state you required this for inspection, which is terrible because we live in Maine, which means that rust will eat that away every couple years, so you're always buying a new one. But I don't need inspections because I'm an antique, which then again means you can't drive it every day. But on the other hand, it means no inspection is a plus. You just got to make sure that it is an inspectable vehicle, which it is. So clean up your spindle. Get off a lot of that old grease. Because, like I saw, I had a little bit of water in there. And again, with this going on, it's not good. Replace that inner bearing. Look for someone else's video for that, because I'm not doing that, because I don't know how. I'd love to know how. Someone could link a video for that, do it up. I'd love to know how to fix this. That inner bearing in there. I know it's got to do with back here somewhere. In there where the U-joint goes in, that whole shaft goes in there. There's a bearing, but I don't know how to do it. I think you got to pull the whole knuckle. I don't really feel like doing that. I don't have a ball joint press or nothing, so I'm not going to get into any of that. But onwards to the whole process. Okay, you got the rotor off. Okay, you got the hub. I mean, the whole hub off. I got the spindle there, right? So you're going to want to take and get your seal off. Well, your seal is this nice... Nice looking thing here that looks about the same as your whole hub assembly because it's been on there for years. Get yourself a big screwdriver. Probably bigger than this because this one doesn't really go past the diameter of the rotor. Get yourself a giant tire. For me it would be my 35 off the truck. Go ahead and set it on the tire on the rim somehow. Just don't want to go through the rotor, the uh, hub hole. There's the uh, old inner bearing. Let's go ahead and put that aside for now because it's junk. And you'll, you'll see why it's all worn out and you can feel the wear in it when you pick it up. Go around this with a smaller screwdriver and pry and you'll see it bend in. Pry the whole thing upwards and at an angle like that. Like this. You'll get inside there and just pry it and pull. All the way around. And then when you get done with that, shove your big screwdriver in. And give it a whack and it'll pop up after either the, either the first or the second time. Maybe the third time if you don't hit it hard enough. But don't worry, you're not going to hurt anything. Just pop that off. You don't have to worry about hurting it unless you didn't buy a new one. In which case, you're an idiot and you should probably go to the store and buy a new one because you don't go through all this trouble not to replace that rear seal. So I'm going to get that rear seal out and I'm going to get my rear bearing off and then I'll show you how to uh, pop these races out and pop in the new ones. Okay, easiest way to do this guys is get yourself a punch. Any sort of punch that you feel comfortable using. It's the only one I had laying around. Get yourself a hammer. This is the only hammer I had laying around. And basically go to the top of the race. Put this on top of the race. I already popped the race out. So put the, the tip that you want to use on top of the race. Set it down. Pound the crap out of it. Turn the rotor. Set it down. Pound the crap out of it. And do that over and over again. You'll see the race starting to drop. Make sure you do it even enough to the point where it'll just pop out and not go crooked. 
if you get it too sideways, you'll screw yourself and you'll have to punch it back in some to get it to come out. Keep it even. I'm going to do the top one and I'm going to show you guys how to uh, press races back in because I got new races and bearings, so got to get those done. Okay, so with the new race in your hand, nice and shiny new race, set it in. Make sure you get it aligned. You can feel it kind of gets in there nice and even. Now here's my uh, homemade tools. I got this. Just welded quickly the washer. You've seen that already. I already made a video of that. So basically I'm just going to take this, set that on top. That's the other bear the other race the one that I already took out of the other side set this plate on top I'm gonna hit that plate I'm gonna put the race in far enough and then I'm gonna use that one to punch it in the rest of the way all right that's the end of my uh, of my how-to parts good luck and continue fixing